Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about the only prophet who is not in heaven. Islam teaches that prophets are sinless, including Muhammad. Islam also teaches that the judgment day is the day when God decides who are going to hell and who are going to heaven. Once, I met a Sunni Muslim who told me judgment day is every day. It means in each day and every day, There are people who are going to heaven and hell. Which is, of course, contradicts uh, Islamic teaching. Especially Sunni. But never mind that. The conversation came up because we were talking about specific hadith. The hadith is very long, but I will read it. I will try to skip some. I will not read the whole hadith because the hadith is very long. Shahi al-Bukhari, hadith number 3342. Narrated Anas, Abu Dar used to say that Allah's messenger said, While I was in Makkah, the roof of my house was open and Jibril descended, opened my chest and washed it with zamzam water. Then he brought a golden tray full of wisdom and faith. And having poured its contents into my chest, he closed it. Then he took my hand and ascended with me to the heaven. When Jibril reached the nearest heaven, he said to the gatekeeper of the heaven, Open. The gatekeeper asked, Who is it? Jibril answered, Jibril. The gate, he, the gatekeeper, uh, uh, Ask, is there anyone with you? Jibril replied, Muhammad is with me. He asked, has he been called? Jibril said, yes. So the gate was opened and we went over the nearest heaven. There was a man. We saw a man sitting by with Aswida. A large number of people. Of his right and Aswida on his left. When he looked towards his right, he laughed. When he looked towards his left, he wept. He said to me, Welcome, O pious prophet and pious son. I said, Who is this man, O Jibril? Jibril replied, He is Adam. The people on his right and the left are the souls of his offspring. The people on his right are the people of paradise. And the people on the left are the people of hell fire. And then the Jibril ascended with me till he reaches the second heaven and said to the gatekeeper, Open. The gatekeeper said to him the same as the first gatekeeper. And he opened the gate. Anas added, Abu Dar mentioned that the prophet met Idris, Musa, Isa, Ibrahim. Over the heavens, but he did not specify their places. But he mentioned that he had met Adam on the nearest heaven and Ibrahim on the sixth. So, this, this hadith showing that all prophets. Adam, Musa, or Moses, Idris, or Enoch, Jesus, are all in heaven. Now, we can ask a Muslim, or we can ask Muslims, if Muhammad is in heaven. Most will say no. And they are actually speaking the truth. Some will say yes. Unfortunately, to those who say yes, they are not actually reading Quran and Hadith properly. It is not possible for three reasons. First, they will not be able to show us any written proof from Quran and Hadith that Muhammad is in heaven right now. Secondly, Muhammad, I mean Muslims, are still praying for Muhammad. 
until this very day. Muslims must give salutation on Muhammad as blessing five times a day, together with their five times prayer, five prayers a day. True, true prophets do not need that. Right? They don't need us to uh, to give them blessing because God gave them blessing, which more than enough thirdly we all know where muhammad is buried his grave is in medina the place is called green dome or akuba al qadr the conclusion is all prophets are in heaven as we speak as i speak except for muhammad Sad but true for Muslims, Muhammad is the only one who is not in heaven. All prophets are already in heaven. But then again, it is not Islam if it doesn't give, give us more questions than answers. Muslims are known for making claims about pretty much anything and everything including to have many graves of prophets, such as Abraham, Enoch, Moses, Adam, yes, Adam. I don't know how they got the, they found the burial of Adam. But next time, in my next video, I will show you the video of the burial of Adam, which is so funny. It will be short, don't worry. And Jesus, but this claim, uh, the the grave of Jesus, is claimed by Mirza Gulam Ahmad, the prophet of Ahmadiyya sect. It is a uh, Islam, Islamic sect. Ahmadi believed that Jesus was crucified but did not die. Mary Magdalene helped him, healing, and back to normal, and lived in. Kashmir. Now, back to the graves problem. Islam believes that we are resurrected, the whole body, not just spirit or soul. The resurrection is the whole body. The same as in Christianity. If their dead bodies are in the graves, Who did Muhammad meet during the night journey? That's my question. Do you understand this question? Muslims claim the graves of Adam is here, the grave of Nuh is there, or Noah, the grave of Enoch here. Prophet Daniel, the grave of Prophet Daniel is in Iran. And some Muslim also claim You know, sometimes, like Prophet Daniel, actually, there are a few claims on it. In Iran, in somewhere else, somewhere else. I don't remember now, but anyway. Graves are for dead body. Graves are for dead bodies. Am I right? The resurrection is the whole body, not just soul or spirit. If... The prophets are already in hell. It means they are already resurrected. But why are their dead bodies are in grave? Are in grave still? This contradict each other. So it means either it means Muhammad lying. He didn't actually meet prophets in heaven. Or The Muslims, the Muslims claims are all fake and false. They do not, they do not have, uh, they don't have the graves of prophets. One of the statements has to be fake or false. Another question is their 
There's this hadith that says Muhammad will be the one who intercede in heaven. Well, in front of God, anyway, in front of Allah. Shahih Muslim, hadith number 193a. Anas ibn Malik reported, the messenger of Allah said, Allah would gather people on the day of on the day of resurrection. They would be concerned about it, and Ibn Ubaid said they would get a divine inspiration about it and would say, if we could seek intercession with our Lord, we may be relieved from this predicament of ours. He, the Holy Prophet, said, Muhammad, said, they would come to Adam and say, thou art Adam, the father of mankind. Allah created thee with his own hand and breathed unto thee of his spirit and commanded the angels and they prostrated before thee. So intercede for us with their lords. I don't know why this says uh, their lords, like plural, but okay. Um, which is, that's why we believe in Trinity. Anyway, that he may relieve us from this position of ours. He would say, I am not in the position to do it. And would call, would recall his error. And would fight shy of his Lord on account of that. Go to Noah, the first messenger sent by Allah. Muhammad said, so they would come to Noah. He would say, I am not in position to do that for you. And he recalled his fault with which he had committed. And then said, you better go to Ibrahim, whom Allah took for a friend. They would go to Ibrahim and Ibrahim would say, I'm not in position to do that for you. And would recall his fault that he had committed and would therefore fight shy of his Lord on that account. You better go to Moses, with whom Allah conversed and conferred Torah upon him. Muhammad said they would come to Moses. He would say, I'm not in position to do that for you, and would recall his fault that he had committed. And Moses said, you better go to Jesus, the spirit of Allah and his word. And Jesus would say, I'm not in position to do that for you. You better go to Muhammad, a servant whose former and later sins have been forgiven. This is very confusing, right? In many levels. Let me continue a little bit more. He said, the messengers of Allah observe, so they would come to me and I would ask the permission of my Lord and it would be granted to me. And when I, I would see him, I would fall down in prostration, and Allah would leave me thus as long as he would wish. And then it would be said, O Muhammad, raise your head, raise your head, say, and you will you would be heard. Ask, and it would be granted. Then I would raise my head. And then keep going. Now I would stop there. Muhammad is believed to intercede because his sins forgiven. But Islamic belief teaches us that teaches us that all prophets are equal and have no sins. You understand? This is very weird. If all prophets have no sins and all prophets are equal, why from Adam, they asked Adam and Adam said, no, I cannot do that. Ask Ibrahim. Oh, Ibrahim cannot do that. Oh, ask Noah. Noah cannot do that. Keep going. Until Jesus. Oh, Jesus cannot do that either. I cannot do that for you. Ask Muhammad. If prophets are all equal and prophets have no sin, either one of them should be able to intercede. This doesn't make sense. 
but this hadith is shahih authentic so this hadith actually creates more questions and another question is why Muhammad can intercede how come Muhammad can intercede for us but he's not in heaven if he's not in heaven why is he not in heaven in heaven heaven is supposed to be a place for people with no sins or sins are for, are for whose sins are forgiven if muhammad is not in heaven there are only two possibilities muhammad's sins are not forgiven or muhammad had sins period i do understand this very confusing but again hey this is islam right all prophets are equal but muhammad is not in heaven while the rest of the prophets are in heaven hmm. muhammad is the only one whose intercession will be heard by Allah. But why is he the only one who is not in heaven? Why are they in heaven? If they're, Why those prophets are in heaven if there's, this, their sins are not forgiven? According to Shahih Muslim, right? Because they are recalling their sins. If there's, their sins are forgiven, Their sins don't matter anymore. Well, so why is Muhammad not in heaven if his sins are forgiven? A lot of questions. So many questions. Too many questions, so little time, and no real answer. That is all from me. Thank you for watching and listening. For those who follow prophets who are in heaven. And for those who follow a prophet who is in the grave, God bless you all. Have a nice life.